Welcome to video two in the silicone rubber series. Here we're going to be talking about silicone rubber injection molding process. So let's have a look at the process itself. Uh, what is liquid silicone rubber or SLR commonly referred to? So the SLR injection molding machine appears to look just like the thermoplastic injection molder machines. Both types of press use the same basic machine parts, as in clamp unit and injection unit. Unlike the high pressures used in molding thermoplastic parts, liquid silicon injection pressure is in the range of around 800 psi. The purpose of the clamp is to contain the expansion force of the silicon material by keeping the mold closed as the silicon cures. You can see some typical silicon parts molded here on the right. So the injection unit for liquid silicon runs cool with a water-cooled barrel and nozzle to prevent the liquid silicon from curing. Thermoplastic injection units run the opposite way. They need the barrel and the nozzle to be heated to around 300 degrees Fahrenheit or more to keep the material moving. Liquid injection molding units also run at lower pressures, say under 1000 psi, as I mentioned previously, while the thermoplastic counterparts run at tens of thousands of psi. Liquid silicon is typically provided in 5 gallon pails or 55 gallon drums. There is a part A and a part B. Colorants come in the form of dispersions are normally 1 to 3 percent by weight of mixed silicone. The silicon dosing unit pumps one part A silicone and one part B silicone via separate hoses to a static mixer. In addition, color is pumped to the static mixer by another hose. The mixed components are then fed into the throat of the injection molding barrel by way of a shut-off valve. You can see a very simple schematic or a layout diagram here, where we can clearly see the two parts, as in part A, part B of the silicone, and the colorant being fed into the mixer unit separately. Once the silicone material is inside the barrel, a shot of the cool mixed silicone advances to the mold as the nozzle seals firmly against the mold. The nozzle shutoff valve opens and the measured shot of cool liquid silicone is injected into a hot around 275 to 390 degrees Fahrenheit clamped mold. Then the nozzle shutoff valve opens and the barrel retracts from the mold while the screw begins to build another measured shot of cooled liquid silicone. Again, we've got a simple schematic here with some explanations as some numbers. We can see one through to five and the descriptions corresponding. A common question that we get asked is, can the same mold machine be used for silicone and thermoplastics? Now, the SLR injection molding requires speciality machinery and processing considerations compared to conventional thermoplastic molding. Notably, whereas thermoplastics must be heated in the injection barrel to their melting point, and then cooled in the mold back to a solid state, the reverse occurs with SLR. It starts out as a fluid and is then heated within the mold to initiate curing. Having said that, the basic principles are the same, and in some cases, both thermoplastic and silicone can be molded in the same machine. We often see this in overmolding process. On the right here, we've got that typical overmolding or two-part process injection. And we're all familiar with the standard toothbrush, which has the two parts molded in one.
So continuing on the theme of that question, the short answer is yes. The same basic mold machine can be used for injection of thermoplastic and thermoset materials. However, the configuration is totally different. The table below shows the different process configurations for each step. So here we have the process in the first column, and then we have thermoplastic and liquid silicone in the other columns. So let's go through this line by line. So look at the process, look at that material. Thermoplastic is single source pellets. The liquid silicone is two part liquid. The feed hopper, thermoplastics is single feed, no mixing, and silicone as two part mixing chamber. The barrel for thermoplastics is a heated barrel with compression screw to melt raw material. With silicone, it's a chilled barrel with metering screw. Injection process. Thermoplastic, injection under pressure. Silicone is also injected under pressure. The mold tool for thermoplastics, the cooling lines to reduce temperature of injected material, whereas the silicon tooling has heating lines to keep tool hot, which heats the injected material. And the curing process for thermoplastic is the cooling of the injected material cures the material into a final product, whereas in silicone, heating the injected material cures the material into a final product. So you can see there are some fundamental differences. So what happens once we have injected our product? So after the silicone vulcanizes in the heated mold, the clamp will open and the parts are then manually removed or automatically ejected. Cycle times for liquid silicone molded parts are often similar to their thermoplastic counterparts. As the production molding run comes to a close, the liquid silicone injection molding process must be readied for a new material for different part designs. It is not acceptable to purge out the system with the new silicone, which will result in the parts having the last production runs silicone in them. If that's a different color, you're in trouble. Therefore, everything must be cleaned out which can easily take a day to clean, depending on which injection mold press is used. Let's have a look at some of the advantages of liquid silicon rubber tooling. Some of the benefits of our plastic injection molding tools are superior ability to accommodate deviations in wall sections, and it has almost no sink characteristics. The ability to create undercuts where the parts can easily be removed from the tooling. Injection from the tool does not require ejector pins. The parts are easily removed by operator or grippers pulling the mold off the tool. Silicon parts require small gates compared to injection molded parts. Let's have a look at the cost consideration of silicon tooling. Tooling for injection molding of silicon rubber components generally costs less than tooling for thermoplastic injection molding. Tooling costs will vary depending on the size and part detail. To offer a sense of cost magnitude, a mold for a seal approximately four inches by six inches with a 0.062 inch diameter o-ring cross-section may cost in the region of $1,500 for a single cavity and around $2,000 for a two cavity silicone injection mold. A mold for a complex gasket with undercuts and complex geometry may cost as much as $6,000 to $7,500 for a single cavity mold. 
the thermoplastic injection mold costs could cost around $12,000 for the same size product. In the next video, we're going to be looking at compression molding processes for silicon rubber. Compression molding has been used to mold rubber parts since the beginning of the rubber manufacturing industry. It is one of the oldest methods still used to mold rubber parts. You can see a quick example of some mold tools here on the right. But we're going to look at that in more depth in the next video. And don't forget to check out our other videos in this series and you can contact us if you need any help with your projects in China. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. My name is Paul Adams from Southeast and I shall see you in the next video. Oh.